I remember the day so well, and I'm sure my students at Eastern High do too. I was driving along Jones Road when I did a double take on wheels. There were some of my boys out in the dunes, and I could tell right off they were up to something. After you've been a teacher for a while, you can recognize trouble almost instantly. What has them so absorbed right now? Recent discussions we had had in class gave me a clue, and I was right. A rocket. A three-foot-long container of explosives that could tear those boys limb from limb if there were an accident. I might have known Bill Gilbert would be involved. He has a real scientific bent, but he ought to know better than to play with firecrackers made of steel. I told them about the possibility of a misfire or an explosion that could maim or kill someone. Jim Newhouse tried to talk me out of it as usual. He's the real mischief maker in that bunch. I told him it was not only their own safety I was thinking of, what about a possible aircraft overhead? That rocket could endanger the lives of a whole plane load of passengers. I could see the boys hated to give up their pet project, so I suggested an alternative. I told them I'd take them out to visit the naval base if I could set it up. With luck, we might see a real rocket and get the Navy professionals to explain the dangers involved. The class liked the idea of a trip to the naval base, the activity of a military establishment, the great ships in from maneuvers and foreign ports filled the students with excitement and anticipation. We parked the bus on one of the large piers. I made sure to count the boys and girls as they got out. The Navy had assigned Petty Officer Joe Grady as our escort. Somebody said they called him Smiley because he smiled once. Grady told the class that we were going aboard a giant cruiser and that we would see the Regulus missile on board. The plan was to see a real missile firsthand and then to watch a motion picture of rockets in action, including the Regulus actually being fired. All in all, it looked like an exciting day ahead for us. The class enjoyed every minute of that trip. For myself, it was a thrill I'll never forget, walking up the gangway of a great ship, a cruiser fresh from duty at sea. To all of us, this ship represents a great deterrent to aggression and a mighty power for peace. The massive gun barrels make a thrilling sight, and I know the boys and girls were impressed. The class wanted to take a look into the gun turret to see what goes on inside. A fire controlman demonstrated how the loading of the guns is automatically controlled from his station. The smooth functioning loading mechanism fascinated everyone. In CIC, the Combat Information Center, the students were overwhelmed by the complex maze of dials, lights, stands, plotting boards and graphs, as well as the various radar devices. The radar man on duty explained the purpose and use of the ship's radar. He said that all of the Navy men who work with radar use the physics and mathematics they've learned in high school as preparation for specialized training they will receive in the Navy in theory, operation, and maintenance of CIC equipment. In CIC, information comes in from various sources and is analyzed, plotted, charted, and disseminated to stations where it is needed. Everywhere we went aboard ship, we were told how the lessons learned in school were helping Navy men today. Engineering control central personnel used both their chemistry and physics in the operation and maintenance of the engineering plant of the ship. Yeomen and journalists were successful because they had studied English and learned grammar, punctuation, typing, and office procedures. Hospital corpsmen used their background in biology and physiology in doing their jobs. When we arrived on the stern of the ship, which our Navy friends call the fantail, the boys saw what they had been waiting for, a real guided missile, one which could actually be used, 
launched from a ship such as this. A chief missileman pointed out various things about the missile. The students were told clearly how dangerous the explosive propellant can be, how the Navy takes the most extreme precautions during a launching to safeguard their personnel. The students were clearly told that a chance explosion of their own three-foot missile could kill or maim them for life. Missiles are for professionals only, the chief said. Remember that. I think all of them got the message. Then I saw that my friend Jim Newhouse was already off on another tack. I heard him ask Grady where the ship was going next. Grady said, I can't tell you where it's going, but I can tell you where it's been. You know, I'll never forget the first time we visited the Mediterranean. Along the coast, we saw many picturesque canals and bridges. Sailors always get a kick out of visiting Genoa, the home of Columbus. And in Greece, the Parthenon reminded us of civilization thousands of years old. Across the world, we visited the Orient with its strange temples and statuary, many of them built centuries ago by hand. And in Australia, we found you can play with a koala bear, unless you prefer kangaroos. About 10 minutes later, we were leaving the ship on our way to a screening room ashore, where we would see the missile movie. Just for precaution, I counted the students again. It didn't take me long to see that someone was missing. Newhouse, of course. I asked the class if they had seen Newhouse, but they told me no. Had he run away? Or was he hiding on the ship? I didn't know what to think, but I was worried. Grady was very nice about it. In fact, I think he was a bit amused, but I wasn't. Jim was on the base under my responsibility. Grady got on the phone to see if anyone had spotted him. He picked up the outside line first. The sentry at the gate said no. The dock watch near the bus said he wasn't back there. Then he tried aboard ship. We got the same answer at the missile area. And from CIC. By that time, I was really worried. But then a call came in on the outside phone for Grady. This is Chief Collins over at the exec's office. You looking for a 16-year-old freckle-faced runaway name of Newhouse? Yeah. I found him walking along the piers, hands in his pockets, whistling. Relax as you please. Finally told me where he came from. All right, I'll drive him over. OK. What's up, fella? You got a lot of people mystified. I was just taking a walk. What's wrong with that? Depends on where you're going. I just wanted to get away by myself to think a bit. What's on your mind? I don't know. Being out here today, I realize how tired of school I am. I mean, those dull classrooms where the teacher sits around and talks all day. And outside, the sun is shining. People are having fun. It does make sense. I don't know who's having fun, Jim. Everyone I know is working when the sun is up. Well, I'd rather be working than sitting in school. I'd have fun working at what I like, or joining the Navy. How about that? We wouldn't take you, Jim. You don't have enough education. No matter what you do, you'll be a failure, unless you stay in school and learn something to make yourself worthwhile to an employer. This is the 20th century, Jim. Industry's making things that weren't even dreamed of 30 years ago. Satellites are being launched off into space. Nuclear energy is running powerhouses and submarines. It's a complicated age. It takes more than a pair of hands to do the job today. That's all I hear, school. I thought this was a Navy, not an educational institution. Well, it's both today, Jim. It has to be to keep up with the times. Today, it's the men with an education who give a head faster. They're able to understand and to use the new developments in electronics, ordnance, and nuclear energy, all the new facets of our way of life. No matter what you choose for a career, you will find that without an education, you won't be able to compete with men for the better jobs. 
It's the first rung on the ladder of success. And without that rung, there's no place to go but down. But suppose I'm just not suited for school. All I do is sit and look out the window and dream. Well, every young man with gumption dreams, Jim. You're not the first to be restless in school. Fifteen years ago, when I was your age, I was restless too. In fact, I did something which was kind of drastic. I stowed away on board a ship for South America. I hid out in an empty garbage can. Fortunately, someone filled that can with garbage and covered me with it too. I gave up my career as a stowaway right then and there. Anyway, I went back to high school. It's the smartest thing I ever did. I took some courses in physics, chemistry, and English, other subjects which would make me a benefit to anyone who employed me. And it's helped me a hundred times in making decisions based on knowledge and experience. It's also paid off in promotions all the way up the line. You know, Jim, there's an old saying, live and learn. Well, the way I say it is learn and live. I think I see what you mean. And maybe you got something there. Thanks, Mr. Collin. You're a regular fellow. Well, that's a real compliment, Mr. Newhouse. Grady's over at the base theater showing some movies. Would you like to come over with me? We were sitting in the screening room when Jim came back, looking a little sheepish. I felt better again. I even began to see the humor in the situation. This guided missile cruiser is about to launch the Terrier. The Terrier is one of the Navy's powerful anti-aircraft missiles, which travels at supersonic speed. The Navy's Regulus packs a mighty punch. Modern ships carry missiles such as these to deter any possible aggressor. This missile can be launched from submarines as well as surface ships. The crewmen working with missiles have had specialized training in electronics, electrical circuits, mechanics, and the safe handling of highly dangerous propellants used throughout the Navy's extensive missile program. And a glimpse into the space age as the vanguard soars off into outer space, bearing a satellite destined to circle the Earth. This launching symbolized the Navy's active participation in the International Geophysical Year. Research and development continues in the Navy on many scientific projects. The day had been a success and maybe for some of the students, a guidepost for success. The way to get ahead, according to the Navy, was stay in school and graduate. That's good advice. <laughs>